And welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. It is another edition of Coach's Corner, a very special one as we have two coaches, two legendary coaches of the area. To my right, Andy Hake. This is his Coach's Corner for Valley Christian. And to my left, one of the greatest uh, oh. of all time, the legend, Mr. Bob Spate of Columbiana. Gentlemen, how are we? I'm a legend only because I'm old. That's it. Okay. <laughs> That's Just, how it comes. That's legacy, yeah, that's, right? that's what it is. Yeah, you're not smart enough to get out, so they make you a legend. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Uh, no, doing great. No, you know, it's an honor to be here with you, DJ, and, and yep. Coach Spade. I think Coach Spade is one of the best coaches in the area, <laughs> and I mean that. And, and no. um, I've looked, you know, I, I was, uh, I graduated in 1998 from Mineral Ridge, uh -huh. and uh, Coach Spate um, was always a feared guy. You know, even back then, and, and all, all his legend grew ever, ever since. He is one of the I, – I know he's he, – uh, Listen, I'm not going to buy a car off of you today, so Yeah, no, stop. I got you. So but he's, stop. Hey, he's okay. truly one of the best coaches in the area. He does more with uh, – I've always said this. Coach Spate's able to do more with um, less. You know, in small, small, in small schools, you, you only get so many pieces, and nobody moves pieces around. Like him. Once, and, and, once he turns that hat around, you know it's business, right? No, no. When he puts the hat around, it's gangster Bob. <laughs> and uh, look out. This, uh, well, I, don't, I didn't have to show up for this abuse. I could, I could be sitting in front of my class. They think I'm important. So oh, my out. gosh. Yeah. I love it. I, I think it's exciting. We're here at uh, Kufleitner uh, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram uh, in Boardman, as we will be every Tuesday morning. So if you're uh, out and about, 10 o'clock. Stop on by, check out the, this beautiful facility. I mean, it, it, like, that's some great vehicles. I'll tell you what, I'm looking at this power wagon over here. Look at you. I would look good in that. You would. I you would, would look go. really good. American in that. flag draped Absolutely. over the back. Absolutely. That's <laughs> Coach Spate Mobile. I want to drive that in the Columbiana Street Fair Parade next. You we'll drive make it, it happen. You drive it, and then Coach uh, Coach Hay could be it, topless with a, an American flag. You in got the that we'll, right. We'll put him shirtless in the back. That you got that idea. right. Oh my gosh. Uh, let's get to uh, last week before we kind of move forward and talk about the relationships with you guys. Coach, a, a rough week. I mean, it was a, a, a tough Wellsville team. You guys uh, you put the best out there. What did you see that you liked last week? What things are you working on this week? Um, what did I see that I liked last week? Boy, not much. <laughs> uh, we, had a, we had a little come-to-Jesus meeting at the beginning of the week here. We had to talk a little bit. Um, we're one and three. We're horribly, horribly inconsistent. I got some great young kids. I do. I got some. I, 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 I got a lot of individuals that want to do well, but we're not playing well as a team right now. Um, like I told them, it's uncharacteristic of of us. Uh, we're not doing some of the things that that we feel uh, Columbiana football is all about, and we're trying to address that. And uh, we got a. We got. Like I said, we have some really. I think our kids care. It's just we haven't figured out how to play as a team yet. That's 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 been our biggest issue. We're unbelievably inconsistent. Well, I mean, we talked before. I mean, it's tough for everybody with numbers nowadays, and it's no different for you. No, and again, I, like we were talking earlier, the numbers thing. Uh, all the small schools are going through it. The only person, the only team around that I know, the numbers are up are South Branch. Okay, uh, they're 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 exploding. Everybody else is battling the same thing, and like we said. Originally, I thought, okay, it's just football. But, like, we had people not go out for band this year or quit band because it took too much of their summer. Or and they quit the soccer team because uh, they needed a job and, and, and I got to buy a new car. And, like, I tried to explain them, listen, Kuflaitners are not going to run out of cars. I can promise you, okay, two years from now, this lot will be just as full and the cars will be just as night, nice. So, I, I don't understand it. I, I don't. I don't. I don't think it's a generational thing, but it's a. It's a thing that's going on right now, pretty much across the county. Everybody wants to work, right? Everybody wants to go work and and, and, and you know stack those dollars. But but the, they have the rest of their life to do that. You've only got four years to play high school sports. Listen, I'm I'm the old guy around here, and I'm, like I tell them, I, I got news for you. You know, it's that all the stuff that they want to do, it's still going to be there. Okay, I guarantee you. The stuff that's going on at midnight is going to be going on at midnight for the next 20 years. That you're not missing a thing, and uh, and like I, I tried to explain to our guys about you know, uh, well I I I I I don't want to give up my summer to do what? Mm -hmm. what? What are you What are you doing? What are you, to, what, to do what? To, to, to lay at the beach? It's always okay, got, It's this. always a funny conversation it, when they say oh, that. Isn't it? Join the team. Be a part of the heroic uh, movement. That you know I, I never understood that and. Yeah. Um, it and I, I'm sure thing. Andy's going through that. I mean, we all are. I mean, and, and so it's not, 
It's not a problem unique to Columbiana. And uh, like I said, I think it's a Tri-County area right now, at least. At least. Now, those guys over in the west, they don't have any issues, but that's a different animal over there. Sure. One bright spot for you has been your quarterback. Uh, easy to watch play. Tough to pronounce his name. Tony Cassandra. So it's taken me a while. Co-Sanger. Co-Sanger. Talk yeah. to me about this young man. It seems like he's a do-it-all quarterback, uh, but he's still trying to, to kind of find his sea legs. Well, it, 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 Tony's, Tony's uh, trying to figure out his, – his biggest thing right now is uh, he doesn't trust uh, our offensive line and, and some of the things we're doing. Um, if if – uh, and, and I've told him this – he has great potential, and he ha he can play great, and he can be a game changer for us. But sometimes he tries to do much. We talk before every game, and one of the last things I tell him is, "Listen, you don't have to make the great play. Just don't make the play that gets us beat. Okay, understand that. Just you, just be yourself. Manage the game. You don't you don't have you don't have to be Superman out there. You got other guys you can rely on, and uh, he he's got great talent. He throws a good ball. He he uh, he runs really really well." He's slippery, uh, and he's intelligent, and, and, and he's got all those things going for him. But like I said, right now, at least for the Clippers, we're not playing as a team. So that's, what, that's, that's our big focus. Watching this team on tape, it's a little bit different. Not usually the Columbiana we're, we're accustomed to. How did, have you had to change your game plan on a weekly uh, basis, offensively, defensively, from the X's and O's standpoint? to kind of accommodate this team that you have? Well, again, it, it goes through a transition. We went, we went through a transition. Andy will remember this a few years ago. We had a young man come through as a freshman, Mitch Davidson. Mm -hmm. okay? When Mitch came through, we transitioned into the, that, the Oregon up-tempo. We were very fast. We were very fortunate. Andy called them acrobats. I think that's the, best, that's the best word we had. We had six or seven guys that could really catch the ball. We were not a big offensive line, but we were fairly athletic. All the linemen I had at the time were, were probably wrestlers or fullbacks or tight ends that just had to play offensive line because that's who we had. So we were able to be an up-tempo, fast pace, throw the ball over. We, we threw the ball 30, 40 times a game. Before that, if you go back when I first came here, you know, we were powering the ball. We, we'd run the ball. And, you know, you just – at small school, Andy does a better job of it than anybody else. Well, we all do. And, and just look at Dan, Danny Yeagley over at South Range. Mm -hmm. They've transitioned. They were strictly a wing T team. It's in high school football, and I know this will sound a little conceited, but I think probably more than at any other level, you have to make your you, you have to be flexible as a coach. You can't say this is what we're doing and we're gonna make all these square pegs fit in these round holes. As a coach, you have to be able to to look at your talent, evaluate what they can do, throw out what they can't do, and try and come up with the best plan possible offensively to do that. Offensively, it's a little more different. Defensively, Andy does a better job than this, anybody. Just get your kids to play hard. Yeah. Just get your kids to play hard. Play with your hair on fire. Run around like crazy people. Get to the football, okay? Sometimes it doesn't look all that great, but it's, it's mayhem. And that's the key defensively. Offensively, okay, we got to try and move chess pieces around and, and, and try and figure out Sometimes you're playing the game without two nights. Sometimes you're playing it without, you know, you don't have all your pawns. So you, you got to figure that out. And we haven't done that yet. So is it something, and most parents, most people that aren't coaches, are going to look at this and they're going to say, okay, the summer before you guys go to play, you're just figuring out what your offense and defense looks like. This is a situation where you can look in seventh grade, eighth grade, and know what's coming up the pipeline and understand how you're going to have to change things around from year to year, correct? Yeah, we, you try to. I mean, and, and the, the, the challenge is um, people want to say, well, your junior highs, your little Clippers, we had this, we went back, a little, the Little League guys, this is years ago, we went back, we had a group of little guys coming through. They were undefeated, unscored upon in fifth, sixth grade, okay? This is going to be the next state champion. Well, it, it doesn't work that way. Right. Okay? It, it, just because you're good there doesn't mean you're going to be. Now, it, I, I don't want to, I'm not trying to, it, kids change so dramatically. Oh, yeah. Now, there are the exceptions. You can, and we've seen that. You can look down and go, okay, that guy's got it. Now, what it is, I couldn't tell you. But sure. But when you. You can, see, you can like when we had Mitch Davidson come mm -hmm. through or when we had a 
when we had uh, a John Hacker come through yep. or, you know, we had, we had some of the, a Josh Hurdle okay, come through, you could look at it and say, okay, that guy understands what's Special. going on. Okay? Special he talent. gets it. Yep. He gets it. But kids change so much, and I think the weight room and, 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 and the home life and, and, the, and the culture that they're brought up in affects us more than probably any other level. Okay, you, that's what you're dealing with. Because we've had, and when I was at Alliance, I had I can't count the number of kids that just broke your heart. I mean, just broke your heart. You, you'd, you'd see them playing junior high and go, oh, boy, I can't wait to get this kid. And then the streets would call and, oh. you know, you, you would never see them again. Sure. So you don't know. So, but in answer to your question, I kind of went a long way around it there. Yeah, you do that. You, you try and You try and look ahead and say, okay, we should be able to do this, this, and this. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go to your side. I mean, it's a little different story for you, especially now at Valley. I mean, you kind of know what's coming up, but you just never know, be, being that they can go here or there or everywhere around you. Keeping these kids in the program, how vital is it, 7th, 8th grade, um, to, to bringing them up to varsity and, and, and knowing what you have from an early age so that way you can adapt your offense around the kids you have? I think a lot of it has to go, honestly, I can listen to you all day, man. you got a wealth <laughs> of knowledge. And, you know, I'm not to pump up his tires, but the, tr- the, the fact of the matter is he's 100% right. He, he, he's been able, just touch on something, he's, he's been able to adapt to um, his players and, and ability um, and talent as much as anybody in the area. Like, he used to run the Vera midline. That was what he did. And you play Columbiana, they're going to run Vera midline. And he had ma- mammoth lines and and. and even when he didn't have mammoth lines, they were well coached. He'd run Veer in midline. And when he, when he had Mitch Davidson come up and, and, you know, I called him acrobats. I played him week one a couple of times. And let me tell you something. We pulled our hair out all summer long because, uh, you, you know what, covering those guys and dealing with that quarterback and the scheme that he ran was, was, was really something. And, and coaches at a small schools, like I said, that, that a lot of times they're able – they have to move their pieces around a little bit more um, than some of the bigger schools. And, and – not saying that the better coach is there, because I don't believe that, but I do believe that you have to adapt to your personnel and talent yep. a little bit more at smaller schools, and um, nobody's done it better than him. And like you said, Coach Yegley. I mean, they're, Coach Yegley at South Range traditionally playing in the ITCL, and then now they're playing Hubbard and Poland and Gerard. They won the league last year. Yep. I mean, this is one of the tougher teams. I talked to him this morning, and um, I just told him, hey, congratulations on the start, and He's one of the best coaches in the area, yeah, you know, absolutely, period. Absolutely. I mean, when it, when it comes to – down. I mean, he's able to get his guys to play, and, and, and they change um, – they adapt to what they have. And, um, yeah, going back to your original question, I think it's, it's tough today getting guys to go all in. And, you know, kids need to have a heroic sense of belonging. I know that sounds silly, but that's – I believe in that. And, and, and that's like a principle I believe in. And, and, you, know, you know, you believe in certain core values, and one of them is kids have to have that sense of belonging. They have to have that sense of, of, of giving themselves up for something greater than themselves. And that's all sports really teaches you. And there's so many factors and so many elements that take away from that today. Um, again, it's like Coach said, I don't know if it's a generational thing, but it's, 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 there's so many distractions, so much other noise out there where you've you got to keep your kids engaged and, 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 and focused on things and, um, you, know, you know, developing young kids and keeping them involved. And, you know, really, what he, he made a great point, losing the guys to the streets. In Youngstown right now, it, it's like a national tragedy what's going on in the city. Um, I think there's 100 deaths this year in the city up to this point. I mean, that's, 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 that's shocking. In, in, in the summer, we lost 10 kids in the city under the age of 18 to, 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 to death. That's not normal. People, no. shouldn't look, look, people shouldn't look at that like, that's, oh, that's, that's just city life. That, that's wrong. Um, kids, I, I feel that it's a mission. I tell our kids all the time uh, and our coaches, hey, we're doing mission work here yeah. because we need to get kids involved. Every kid in the, in the school, try to get them on a the team. Get them on the team. And it doesn't, we'll utilize them one way or the other. I remember at Reserve, we had 60 guys on the team, and they're not all football players. They weren't all football players, but you know what? They came out for a reason. They wanted to be a part of something. And we, we beat that drum real hard. And then you know what? Find a way to utilize a guy, even if it's a third down rusher or a special teams guy. Just get him on the field. And by the time he's a junior or senior, if he hangs in there, you could get him to do something. And, and, and you know what? Pump up his tires and give him a reason to, to, to be, a, be a part of it. And we're doing that right now at Valley. And 
you know, there's a process of them getting to know our coaching staff and us getting to know them. And I really feel like the kids, we had a real tough practice yesterday. We didn't use, we did one drill with a football. It was three on three hitting. And then uh, we conditioned for about an hour and a half. And it was, it was, it was pretty tough. Uh, it was the hardest practice we had uh, since um, I've been involved and uh, at Valley and, and the kids responded great to it. I mean, um, I don't think I could have had that practice in August. I, I think that some guys would have tapped out and I think some guys would have rebelled a little bit, but they, 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 they fought through it yesterday. And I think it's a culture thing, you know, kids and uh, people will we'll give you, will we'll, we'll, uh, give you what you expect of them. You know what I mean? And if your expectations are up here, yep. then even if they fall short, they're high, but if your expectations are here and they fall short, then you know you stink. And and, and it's not it's not being mean. It's just I I, I think it's the way you approach it. You know, we's uh, we've actually seen it happen this week more than any other that I've seen in the last four years. Kids in, in small climates. I mean, there was a, a situation on on one team that I heard about that that kids quit at halftime because they weren't getting the ball and they were up twenty one points. I mean, is it a situation, and not to knock kids, but is it a situation where it's it, we are turning into more of a me society and, and things of that nature? Well, I teach socio. Uh, I, they give me a little half-day job at Columbiana just to keep me out of trouble, okay? <laughs> Try to keep me off the streets. Yeah, right. Okay? okay? And, 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 and uh, one of my classes I teach is sociology, and it's funny you say that because we're just going over that. I read, a, I read a great book by Ben Sass, Senator Ben Sass. It's called Them, Why We Hate Each Other, okay? And... It talks about the split and the division. But in that, he mentions, and I just covered this in class yesterday. That's when he said that. It's not generational, okay? If we want to blame, like, the IY or the Generation X or, or, or those, and as a boomer, as, a, as one of those guys that were one of the old guys, we like to do that. We like to be the old man. I, want, I like to be Clint Eastwood sitting on the front porch with a, with a cooler of beer going, these goddamn kids, get them off my lawn. What's, right, wrong? Right, What's right, wrong with right. kids today? What's wrong with kids today? Why can't they be like we were? Well, it's not... I forget how many million of them there are. Yeah. So it's not that. It's the, it's the individual. And each individual has the ability to overcome whatever the circumstances are. And it's our job. And that's why I think Andy hit on it. That's why football, to me, is, is, is the last bastion in America and I know this is people are going to go. Oh, Give him right. pearls, Bob. Oh, Give him pearls, man. Oh, this 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 old fart. He doesn't. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Here we go again. But I'm serious. What other sport can do what we do? Andy just mentioned you can get a kid on that's a third down rusher. Mm -hmm. Listen, we can include it, when we're good, when we're really good in our my really really good teams and his really good teams. You go out there and you had a tough time doing the scout thing because. They're playing 20, 25 kids. They're special teams. You're checking guys off. You're looking. My God, they're playing 20, 25 kids, 30 kids a night sometimes. Okay? Basketball can't do that. No. Okay? Golf can't do that. Okay? Soccer certainly. I, I, don't, I don't know enough about soccer, to, but I don't think they can. Right. I don't know. Maybe you can. But, but I, I know this. In football, what separates it for us, like I tried to explain to our kids the other days, it's not something, if you've got a great player and you go out and, in basketball, and again, please, basketball coaches, don't call me. I, I, I don't mean any disrespect, okay? Uh, or you got a uh, baseball, you got a great player. Listen, you can go out and you can do your thing and still be kind of successful. Mm -hmm. There's just too many moving parts in football. The stuff that we do, if, if I have a great player but, but he's not disciplined enough to do what he's supposed to do, even if it's on a special team, even if it's just running down the field, you got to stay in your lane. You got to, you know, this is what you got to do. Okay, you can't just freelance. Okay, it requires a certain amount of discipline. It's playing chess, and the knight goes, ah, I don't want to move that way. I, I'd rather instead of two and one, I'd rather go five and four. Okay, well, you, well, you can't do that. That's right. not that's not the way it works. So, I think we have a chance as football coaches. Okay. Um, to impact kind of the way things are going. And I, I, I hope and pray parents understand that because I know there's a there, – I just talked to a mom yesterday. She was, well, my son's going to play, but I, I'm really not, really not in favor of this. I, I'd much rather he – then do what? Okay? You know, play what? 
Okay, I, I think Andy said he had a tough practice. Okay, and you, you couldn't do it earlier. That's the key. Okay, it's it's not it's not where you start; it's where you end up. Yep. Okay, and if you look at good teams and good programs and things, they're always, always, always getting better. Mm -hmm. And that's my concern about our team this year. I don't think we're getting better right now. I don't. So th that's my challenge. That's my coaching staff's challenge. Okay. That's our seniors' challenge is we got to figure out a way. we got to improve every week. Okay. It's not about wins and losses. It's about getting better and being the best we can be. Okay. And I don't know what the best we can be is. Okay. So we'll see. That's good, though. From, from your standpoint, you can look at it and say the best is yet to come, right? Hopefully. Well, that's what we try to tell us. We're on a mission here. Here's, you know? a, here's a question that I think everybody wants to know from both of you guys is, is what makes you come back? Coaching has, <laughs> coaching has been. I'm too stupid. <laughs> a disease. <laughs> yeah. Coaching has been so challenging, um, <laughs> especially lately here, probably the last decade or, or, or so of, you know, you're hearing it from, you know, administration. You're here. You have so many people to answer to nowadays. Fine. I mean, somebody's got to ask you at some point, either on the record or off. What makes you come back in that, that situation? Go ahead, Andy. I just love working with young people. And I feel that, you know, you have gifts. God gives you gifts, talents. You know what I mean? And, and, and we're lucky enough to find our, our, our gift and our talent. And it, it's to work with young people. And we love the game of football. And, I mean, you know, I just, you know, it, to help kids. And, 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 and you love the game of football. My mo mother and father, like I said last week, they, they were teachers. 35 years, special education. Um, you know, I grew up with teachers. And I grew up with, um, you know, coach. My father was a coach. And they're great people. And, um I love I love being around young people and helping people. I find at a young age I can I can um, you know help help young people through the through the game of football and I just I, I love it. You know what I mean? And uh, to me, there's there's nothing better. And I'm gonna do this uh, hopefully till till I can't do anything anymore. I'm gonna you know I'm gonna coach football and um, be good to young kids and try to help out young people through the game because you know really in the end all all, all sports does is reveal your character. Yeah. You know, in high school sports, what, what are you really doing? You're, 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 you're revealing your character. What happens when it's the chips are and the odds are against you? You know, how do you respond? Are you gonna are you gonna tank it? You're gonna put your head in the sand like an ostrich, and act like you know, and, or are you you're gonna fight like heck? And um, you know, I and, and plus you know, there's some other you know another thing is you know like co coaches an older guy. He's been doing this a long time. Mm -hmm. What else is he gonna do? <laughs> hey, hey, that's he's exactly great, right. But he's I great have, at he's great at this, and you know I what? have zero skills. But no, <laughs> you know what? It's it's almost like you know what? Um, I, I feel like until Coach Bate doesn't want to coach anymore, who are you gonna get in Columbia? And, and I'm not trying to say, who, who, who are you gonna get in Columbia? There's always the next guy. Yeah, that, me. That's fine, but you know what? The next guy. It's always it's like firing a guy in college and in NFL. Is the next guy better than the guy you have? Well, and you never want to be that next guy, right? Well, I, who wants to replace? Honestly, Tom, who would want to go to Columbia at, and replace him? Look at him? New England, right? So you no. got Tom Brady. Who wants to replace Tom Brady? You want to be the guy that replaces the guy that replaces Tom Brady. I mean, they one found of, that one out. Of, one, of, one, of, one of the best things as kind of a response to that, one of the best things, and I think Andy's been there too, you go to Maslin's locker room. I always, I, I always thought, I think that's, they get it. Isn't it sense, something? It, they get it in the sense that, they have a picture of every one of their coaches, okay? And the, your picture's up there, but they have an empty frame right next to you, okay? And it's, the message is pretty clear. Dude, you're not going to be the last guy here, mm -hmm. okay? There's somebody out there that's going to take your place. Mm -hmm. You're not irreplaceable, okay? And um, I, I thank you for the compliment, but believe me when I tell you, Columbiana football existed long before I came, and it'll exist long after I'm dead and gone. And as to why I do it, and I get that all the time. Why are you? Because I'm not. My health's not what I don't. I can't run around like I used to. Okay, I can't get down. My knees are shot. You know. You know. I. I get. You know. My. My ankles. All. You know, I got more problems. Than you, but. And people say, "Well, why do you keep doing it?" Well. Number one, I love it. Yep. You know, I, I really do. Have number two, to, right? like Andy's, I really truly don't have any other skills. What am I going to do? I got, I mean, I can't do anything else. Andy says I can come sell cars. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. I don't know. You'd be great, I, brother. Can you imagine <laughs> these two confronting you at the door? No. <laughs> but the, 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 thing, the thing I do know is um, I enjoy the, 
I, I love the season part. Yeah. Now, i got to be honest with you, and I'm being totally frank. I don't enjoy the off season as much as I used to. Yep. I, these last two years have been a major challenge. This COVID thing, the, oh. the, the, the normal, like I just said, I told our coaches the other day, I almost, and i got to be careful how I say this in case my kids are listening. So if, if, if you're from Columbia and you're listening to this, I don't, I don't mean this. Turn the volume down. Okay. But I'd almost rather go back to the old days when I had to chase kids around, okay, when I would drive around at night and try and find the party so I could, you know, listen, you can't be drinking, you can't be running around, you can't be doing this, okay, you're fighting with your girlfriend, okay, listen, you got to behave, quit hassling your teacher, sit your butt down. I'd rather go back to those days than fight this craziness with mask and vaccine and is who's who's getting sick and who's not getting who's getting sick who's not okay stay six feet apart okay you can wear the mask now you can't wear the mask now okay we got to do this okay we can do it, it it's it's insanity it's insanity um and, and listen i don't want to i'm not trying to get political i don't want to no. i don't want to get on either okay. side of this we'll we told our kids listen We'll do whatever they want. You, you want me to? You want me to? You want me to dress up in a speedo, okay, and coach <laughs> on Friday night, okay? I'll do it. I won't be happy about it, but I'll do it because I love the game, right? Okay. Listen, what they're asking you to do, do it. Damn it, do it. Yeah. Okay. This is. Forget about who's right and who's wrong. These are the rules. Let's obey them. Enforcing those rules is really tough now because. Well, just because of the political climate. Yeah, Everything. there is a political side there, to it. Yeah, there is, and there is, and you can't you can't not escape it. Like I said, I teach sociology, I teach psychology. Okay, we we're, we're going over that now. We're going over all that stuff now. This is folks. This is what brings us together. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is. I, I heard Jim Trestle talk once, and they ask him, uh, "What is football? What's, what what do you think of when you think of when you think of football?" In one word. Okay, and it was really interesting. They had a whole bunch of coaches on, and they gave him the one word. And co- what stuck with me was Coach Tress said, "Together." That was his. What he thinks of football is because we do everything together. It's true. That pretty much sums it up. Yeah, I mean, you think about it, and from your your case, obviously you're in depth, but. The simplicity of it is 11 guys in a huddle, and if they all work correctly, the job gets done. If they yep. don't, it doesn't. It doesn't. That, that's the ultimate team sport right And, and yep. thinking about just Coach Trestle, you know, you and me had like an ultimate game a couple of years ago when we opened up. We talked about this last the, the, the <laughs> veterans game. One of my favorites. And um, he came down and spoke uh, to the crowd and then to the veterans in the end zone. Um, and that's like, you know, him as a person, his greatness was – that, you know, he, that, that's how he believes. That's you know what I mean? It's not absolutely. just some BS uh, answer to a question. You could, you know, and you watch his teams through the year. He didn't always have the best teams, but he would beat you with B, B guys, and you might have A guys, mm-hmm. but his team played together. And his philosophy and concepts and, and, and his principles, you know, reflected his team play. You know, we're going to play defense. There, nobody has the ball on. Oh, you, you do not have the ball when you're on defense. <laughs> So you, you have to play like, uh, you know, together and, and, and play like maniacs and uh, really want to get to the football and really want to play hard and, and really want to, you know, have that team concept. And, and I think that is, you know, luckily you and me got to know him and, 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 yeah. and, and, and he really, hey, I miss him at Ohio State, I'll tell you that much. Oh, I do too. I, I really miss him because, you know, when I go. I miss to- him in coaching. I mean, I'm, I'm glad he's at Youngstown State, okay. He's, he's doing great things for the university. Sure. The university's growing like crazy under him. And you can see the leadership part of that is is uh, is what it's all about. Absolutely, okay? he's he's a great leader. And uh, I'll, I'll I'll say I'll, I'll tell a war story here. When I'm a I'm a very young coach, and I'm at Alliance on my first I think it was my first year at Alliance, and uh, just an assistant coach, just a defensive line coach. But I got a couple guys that want to come to the Youngstown State camp, and I call them. Okay, boom, we make it up. I'm going to come. Hey, Coach Tress, I want to work the camp. Okay, come on, come on up. We'll give you a room. We didn't get paid. Just we'll we'll give you a room. Work the thing. Okay, my two guys slept in, did not go to the first practice. I'm out there. I'm and my guys aren't there, and I'm like, oh, okay. And Coach Tress, a younger guy then too, and. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I I go up to him and says, "Hey, coach, my, my guy slept in." He goes, "Okay." He goes, "Well, you, you go get him, bring him, bring him to me." So I go and get him, boom, bring him to him. He goes, "Okay, you guys are now. You listen, see the stadium over there. You guys are running stadium steps until I tell you you're done." 
And I thought, okay, this is really good. I'm really good. And he looked at me and goes, you're going with him. Oh. Okay. okay. And I ran, I ran the stadium steps because Coach Tress told me to. Now, if he told me to do it now, I'd probably say, you know what, Coach? I'm going to go home. <laughs> you run with me. <laughs> okay. But back then, I was like, oh, my God. Okay. And that taught me more. The, the thing I learned from Coach Tress right then more than else was, okay, I'm responsible for my guys. Mm -hmm. They're my guys. And he gets this, too, and, I, and every football coach out there gets this, too. You never – I've been I've taught for 45 years. I've never had a kid – I've never had a teacher come to me and say, hey, listen, you're a history student. Hey, listen, you're a social studies student, okay? Hey, listen, the kid you have in study hall is a – but I can't count the number of times I've had somebody, hey, you're a football player. That's it. And I tell our guys all the time, listen – it, 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 the, the, the classic um, Kirk Cousins line, I think it was, you know, football is a privilege to play that entitles you to nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay? Coach Tress used to teach that. Football is a privilege to play that entitles you to nothing. Okay? And so that's, that's, where we have to, that's where we have to instill in our kids that more is expected of you, not less. Okay? More. You, you put that jersey on. That Valley Christian jersey, that South Range jersey, that Boardman jersey. You put that jersey on, okay, you're expected to be better than everybody else. Right. And that's so. the thing is, is I think nowadays, I mean, there's songs about it. There's a privilege to playing football. But if there is, that privilege is earned because of what you do on the practice field, on the, on the game field, how you represent. But that's really all sports now. Yeah. You know, there's, you, oh, yeah. you look oh, across absolutely. it, and, and people, people feel, and correct me if I'm wrong, people feel that athletes have an advantage. It's not that they have an advantage. It's they dig in a little bit deeper a lot of times. Well, yeah, and, and I've always said that. Anything. And, by the way, I think it's the same thing. I think the baseball coach and the basketball coach sure. would say they're going to get the same comments. Yep. Okay? Coaches in general okay, um, are going to get that as much. Band directors probably get yep. it. I don't know that for a fact, but I'm probably pretty sure that – uh, our band directors had uh, teachers or other people come and say, hey, listen, you're listen, when you become part of a unit, whatever the unit is, okay, you have a responsibility that puts you out in front of everybody else. That you, you, You've raised your hand and you've said, hey, I want to do this, okay, but you have to understand with that privilege to do whatever it is you're doing, sure. you're going to, you're going to have to, I think Andy said a, a little bit later, you got to give something up. Yep. Okay. It's you a sacrifice. Gotta, you got you listen. In order to become what we can be, we got to give up what we are. Mm -hmm. I know Andy's I used like that, that line a thousand times. I love that. All right, let's talk about COVID here. Just a, <laughs> now, now we're we're not going to dig too deep, but I I know as, as a coach, it bothered the hell out of you last week when you didn't have a game. You prepped for that game all week. You're prepared, and and really, that's a game that is very important to not only the the climate of your team, the climate of United, but the climate of the conference. Sure. I mean, first question I have for you, is there is that game going to be made up? How do you make that up? We're in, we're in league season? play. Yeah. So, I mean, as long as teams play each other, I don't know how it would be made up. I mean, we'll go play on a Monday. Yeah. But, but, but I, I, you know, that's hard to, that's hard for, I mean, I'm sure Ogilvy sees, uh, DJ feels the same he way. I mean, play, he yeah. wants to play the game. He did not want to play the game. And I feel really bad for both teams and both kids and, um, he, he, he didn't want that to happen. No. I mean, uh, some young guy test positive and, and they shut it down and, and that's happening all over the state every yeah. week. It's, this isn't, how you, frustrating is that for you though? I mean, well, the not, China not virus you, got us, you know, they, they, it, <laughs> and, 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 and I'm not, I'm, I don't think you're getting political yeah. by calling no. a spade a spade. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, that, uh, a virus is put on our country. Yep. Um, it was put on the world and the free world is going to uh, be more vulnerable than some of these authoritarian governments. It is what it is, and um, you know the people of China aren't bad people; they're good people. Yep. They're like you and me; they want hopes and dreams; they want a better life. But um, you know, some of these governments are out of control, and uh, they hate the free world. They hate our way of life. They hate our freedoms. They hate our, and and, and the, it is a political. It, the virus itself is real. Someone says it's not real. That's false. Yeah, it's real. Yeah. Yeah. And, and people and people have gotten it. Uh, you know, there's people that died. This is this is a terrible situation. And I'm not looking. I had it. You know, I feel like I got punched in my ribs by Mike Tyson for yep. a couple of days. Lost my smell, lost my taste for a couple, uh, for about a week, two weeks. And then, you know, I'm young and fortunately uh, I was able to bounce back. A lot of people weren't. Yep. And it's a real situation. But so is diabetes. Yep. So, yeah. is, you know, it, it, you know, I mean, it's, this is something that needs to be taken 
and they, they need to figure this out because you know what uh, that that's another issue you know you're a kid and you want to play ball and you get involved in something and then you know football games are precious there's only 10 of them there's only 10 of them they're very precious they're only two and a half hours uh, on Friday night two hours two and a half hours and then um, it's over and you only got 10 of them and um, they're precious and, and if you, you you get one taken away from you that's very frustrating for young people. And we don't have an opportunity to make that up. And in our case, you know, people tell me that was a league championship game. That's hard for me to say that, that was a league championship game. Yeah, we're two, I feel, we're two of the better teams in the league. No but, question. But I'm not going to say, you know, that was, no a, question. that was the first game of the conference. A lot can happen. You know what I mean? And, um, but we were really excited to play the game. I know Dan was, or DJ was. And uh, I just feel bad for both teams. We didn't have enough time. We, we, we made calls. God knows uh, me and my athletic director, Dolph Carroll, he's a great guy. He made so many calls. Love I made him. so many calls. It just didn't work out. It really didn't. Um, we offered money to people to play him. You know, and, Did you uh, call Bishop Sycamore? No, but I thought about it. <laughs> but my thought was this. Um, whether whether you know whether whether uh, I got to pay them or they got to pay me, they're they're going to write me a bad check. So you know what I just said uh, that that's this isn't going to work out. But no, we called everybody. We called Pennsylvania teams. It just didn't work out. And I'm not I'm not angry at anybody, but this is very frustrating. It's it very frustrating, and it's a challenge. And and you know what, getting your kids. Hey, I gave them Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. Mm -hmm. I said, you know what, I feel bad for the kids. They really bust. We had a real classical practices last week for a championship game. Like, and you know what, to get it out of our kids, um, they really bought in and they, they, they wanted to win the, you know, they wanted to win the league and they felt if we win this game, it goes a long way to win the league. And um, it just didn't work out. And you know what, we're, we're going to try to beat Lisbon this week yep. and, 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 you know, somehow, some reason we don't get to play them and we have to play somebody else, play them and line them up and play. But um, it's very frustrating, and I didn't experience this last year because I, you know, I was out of coaching last year, but coming back, this is very hard. It so, really is. So walk me through, because I think most people, and Coach, this has happened to you, obviously, from a standpoint of frustration for not playing a oh, game. Oh, absolutely. It, well, we were, we've been fortunate. We, had, we didn't get bit. Right. But we're li we know every day we're living on the edge. So it can yeah. happen to anybody. Yeah. How, what is the conversation like? Because I think most people don't realize those four or five days of practice that lead up to that, that game – the game's the prize for the kids. Sure. It's for the coaching staff. It's what you work all week to get to. What is that conversation? It has to be almost devastating to, to transfer what you know to those kids and try to keep spirits high at the same time. Andy, what was it like for you last week? Very tough. I'm, it happened Thursday night. Yeah. So that's it, worse. I, that's the worst. And, 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 and my guy, and you, you prepare all week. Offense, defense, special teams, uh, the mental aspect of it. Hey, uh, we're going to have to bounce back. We have to play rocky football, get up when you get knocked down, mm -hmm. and, you know, counter punch, and then, you know, you, you, you clean up the penalties and mistakes from McDonald game. We had 160 yards of penalties. And my quarterback did for 450 yards against McDonald, only 300 counted mm -hmm. because of the penalties. You know, that, 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 guys, we got to clean up our act. And then the guys take that step to, to do that. And it's like really, you know, hey, man, our guys are working their butts off to, 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 to correct those mistakes. And then, you got the game taken from you. And if that's the worst thing that happens to these kids their whole life, God bless them. But when you're a young person, that is the world to that's you. That's your life. That's, that's the world to you. And, uh, you know, we tell guys on Friday night a lot of times, there's nothing more important in your life right now than this. Because at that moment, there is nothing more important. Right. And then, and then, and then to have that taken away and, and, and then, hey, don't worry, guys, you got next week. Well, you know what? Do you? Yeah. Because then they start thinking, do we have next week? No, that's the, that's the killer now. Yeah, I mean it's really tough. And then you know what? Uh, you know who called me? Glenville for a game. Well, I'm not playing Glenville, and nothing against Glenville. You know what I mean? But so, some of the people that call you, you know, we have a nice team when it comes to. And you know this, got just enough guys to uh, get the job done. I'm not going to go play Glenville. I'm not going to go <laughs> play. I'm not going to go play someone where, hey, you get five, four or five guys really banged up, but you got your game in. But you lost by 40, and you got three or four guys knocked out for weeks. Yeah, and then you got to battle the rest of the six games. And or, the kids are saying, play them. Coach will play them. And, you know, they'd probably play the Chicago Bears, too. Yep. But you know what? What's best for Valley Christian? What's best for Columbiana? You got to, and that's hard for a coach, too, because I'd rather play a game than not. Yep. But it got to make sense. And, um, you know, it's tough to tell kids, you're off this week. We could have played them, but we didn't. Why? You know, and, and – um, same reason I'm not playing Archbishop Moeller, you know, or Warren G. Harding. Yeah. Got to make sense. It has to make sense. And yeah. I'm, I'm not putting my guys in a bad position either. No. 
coach, from your standpoint, what, what would that be like for you? What, what's the first thing that you, goes through your mind and how you translate that to your kids? Well, last year we ended up with a, we ended up with a, a, a nine-game schedule by, but we kind of knew it was coming. Mm-hmm. It was because of the way the state did the, the insanity of the playoffs where everybody made it, and then the following week if, if you lost the playoffs, you could finish your season, you could do that. Well, we – and it was probably my fault in, in, in the way you look at it. We really thought we could win that first game, mm-hmm. okay? And so I didn't want to schedule anybody, mm-hmm. and then we ended up in the same situation. Okay, we lost. Now we're looking around, we're scrambling. Well – the people, some of the people that lost tapped out mm-hmm. and didn't want to play the rest of the season. Other people that lost, okay, were more than willing to play us. But just like Andy said, I, I don't need to go play you. I, don't, I, I can still play two more games at the end of the year or three more games at the end of the year. Um, I, I don't know what I'd do. Believe me, I, I'm on pins and needles, and I mean that sincerely, uh, every week. We're, 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 we're holding our breath. When... when when that came out that United and Valley Christian were down, were out on a Thursday, it was it really, it re- it really hit home. It really, um, so it happens to you. Bothered us, yeah, right. It, no, it, I get it, it. It, it really bothered us, and, and like I told our kids, listen, you got to understand. You know, I used to, we used to, that was the standard line at the beginning of the year in, in summer camp and and and, and, and two days and stuff like that. You're only guaranteed ten games, fellas. You're guaranteed a 10. That's it. You, this, that, you, you got 10 chances. Well, you can't say that anymore, <laughs> okay? You don't know. You literally, we told our kids before we went out, and I thought, it was a good, I thought it was a good pregame speech, but it turned out not to be. But I said, you know, you don't know. This could be your last game, Yeah. okay? We're going to go out. You got to, you know, there's that famous last play speech that you see on uh, the boys of fall, you know, play oh, it yeah. like it's your last play. Play. You know, you don't know. Well, we have to approach that. Now, like every play is our last play because yep. you just don't – this insanity that, that is part of our world now, um, and it is, it, it's total insanity. Um, we don't get to control that. No. Okay? You, you try – and I think that's the frustrating part as coaches. We're all kind of control freaks. Okay? We want to control everything about our program. Mm-hmm. Well, <clears throat> this is out of our control. It really is, and it's it's uh, it, it's tough. It's and I don't know if there's answers for no. it. No, that's the that's that, see that's the most frustrating thing. What's the answer? And people don't even want to address the situation correctly because it's so political. It is a political situation. Now the virus itself is not political. No, that is a real thing, you know. But that didn't come out of the sky, and it didn't come out of eating bats. That, that, that's not true. It's just it's, you have to look at things as a history teacher, and you've been a history teacher a long time. You know, and the thing, like I said, and again, I told her, my wife almost died. She really did. She was in the hospital for 81 days. With the oh, virus. I remember this. It was just a scary got, thing, man. Scary thing. And she just got, her, she got a trach in since uh, January and just got it out a couple of weeks ago. Now, she's back. God bless she's, her. She's way, she's way tougher than I am. Way tougher than I am. I, I, you know, I'd have been, I'd have been, somebody give me a bullet, please, because I'm not, I can't do this. But you know, so it's, it's not that. I'm, so we're not saying it's not real, and that's what I tell our kids. It's not real. Like it, it, no, that's the false. It is real. It's really, it's really, really, really this. And you do need to be concerned about it, and you do need to do this. But you need to control what you can control. Okay. For us right now, the rule is, wear a mask. Okay. And again. I'm not arguing whether it makes sense or don't make sense. You're either vaccinated or you wear a mask. Okay? If you're vaccinated and wear a mask, these are the rules right now. Okay? You're okay. You're not going to be quarantined. You're able to play. So I told our players, the, the Speedo thing. Okay? Same thing. Wear a freaking mask. And I got guys on my team that are right-wing guys. I got left-wing guys. We, we, we got that mix of bodies. Mm-hmm. Okay? Listen, I don't care. Okay? Understand this. Right. If this is important. We're not going to debate this right now. You're right. You want to, you want to debate it, we'll, we'll debate it afterwards. We'll, we'll come to my class. We'll debate politics all you want. Sure. Okay? It's sure. football right now. So do what you're told, and let's get through this. Let's punch through this. Okay? Please. So, and, and I understand the frustration they com- uh, that, that, that comes with I get frustrated because it slightly political. Sorry. The problem we have is a lack of leadership mm-hmm. across the board, state government, national government, okay? 
to me, I wish they would do one of the two. Just listen, this is what it is. You're all doing this. You're all doing this. This is the way it is. Don't leave it up. And I know that's against the American thing. It's against what I believe in. But at the point right now, I'm like, make a stand. Tell us what we're doing, okay? And if you don't like it, vote me out in three years. Amen. Okay? If you don't like it, but, but this is what I believe. We do that as a football coach. This is what I believe. Sure. Okay? Sure. This, these are the rules of my classroom. These are the rules there. You don't like it? There's another go go somewhere else, so, but or petition the school board and get me fired. Yep. Okay, you know whatever. Okay, but I'm in charge of this part of the world. Okay, and these are things. Somebody needs to do that up above. There's a lot of people though, coach, that feel like last year we had it more together than this year. Absolutely. Do you feel the same way? I do. I, I and like I said, I didn't like last year. I didn't like it at all. Okay, but think about it. We didn't lose a game. Every game that was scheduled was played. Yeah. Okay? Why? You got to wear a mask. You got to get down here. You're over here, six feet apart. Made you crazy. You got to have your own water bottle. You can't. You can't. You play a game, but we're not allowed to shake hands at the end of the game. Everybody's waving. That, that's, 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 that's the stupidest thing I ever saw in my life. But if that's what it takes, if that's what it takes to play a season, then that's what we're doing. Okay? What's the up? man is here. The Johnny Kuflite. Uh, he is. The it's man, the myth, the living legend. Yeah, yeah, it's good to see you, John. No, but he's 100% right. And you know what? Leadership is... It's key in everything. And, you, and, and I think everybody could say this. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh-oh. What are we we're doing? We're going to get pulled here. We're going to lose our cord. We're going to lose our cord. We're going around. We're going the around. Cord, the cord. The cord. The cord. We love you, John. We love you. <laughs> We're getting. We got a little bit of a turn. I like right. it. That was it's sweet, cool. though. No, that was that was sweet. <laughs> that was that was okay. Good well, save, John. I, I was hey, I was it was a flashback. I yeah. thought it was the sixties. I thought it was the sixties again. I'm going. Whoa! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey, I haven't done anything like that since I was eighteen. Wait Only a minute. here on the network. No. Um, Can you get that? And that we're going was, backwards. John, that was awesome. This is awesome. Um, n- no, but uh, on what he's saying, yeah, I think it is. It's it's really a lack of leadership, and you don't want to get into. It's just the country right now. Yeah. You know, what I mean, and and I think both sides can say there's a real lack of um, just a direction. Yeah, we're more at each other's. I I don't remember. I'm 41 years old. I don't remember us being at each other's throats like this. I mean, I I know when the Rodney King situation happened in the 90s, there right. was a lot of racial tension. You know, but other than that, I wasn't around in the 60s. To, and I know that that was the <laughs> civil rights movement. I'm sure it was a lot worse than right now with mm-hmm. Vietnam. I'm sure that it was a lot worse. But um, just, uh, just living through it, I haven't seen anything like this political I, I, environment. I, I'll tell you, and this is, this is the, the disturbing. This there is you the go. Distur- I'm sorry. Arlene, no. <laughs> You're go great, ahead. bud. Okay. This is the disturbing thing for me about the country, about, about what we're talking about, about leadership and stuff like that, and how we support or don't support our leaders. Okay? I just saw this the other day. Um, John F. Kennedy inherits, wins the presidency, inherits from the Eisenhower administration the, the, the invasion of Cuba, the, the really screwed up, total cluster, screwed up invasion. Okay? Uh, Bay of Pigs. Debacle. Major League debacle. Okay? He goes on national TV. Well, back then, it was hey, the president's talking. We better listen. What's the president yeah, every channel. What, what Every channel. What, what's the president saying? Oh, my God. The, the president's going to talk to me? Right. He's going to talk to us? What's he saying? And he comes on and says, hey, Mia Copa, my fault. On me. Total screw up. Okay, I'm the president. I made the call. My bust. His approval rating goes to 80%. 80% of the country are like, don't worry, John. You're our man. <laughs> right. Okay, you're our, don't worry. We're with we're you 100%. Dude's taking now, responsibility. It, now, please please, don't misunderstand. What I, the 50s and 60s had a whole lot wrong with it. There was real, honest-to-God racism. Mm-hmm. There was real, honest-to-God sexism. There was all kinds of not good things. Okay, But the one thing that we did have back then was he's our leader. This is our guy. I don't like him. Because there were a lot of guys that voted, voted for Nixon. Okay, I don't like him, but he's our leader. Okay. Trestle's togetherness. Yeah, together. 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 Okay. Now, am I a Joe Biden fan? No, I'm not. Okay. Am I a Donald Trump fan? No, I'm not. But you know what? He's our leader. leader. He's in charge. Okay. This is what we're doing. 
okay, boss, you're, you're in charge. Let's go. Let's do this. Okay. Nowadays, if, if that situation happens, and, and part of a problem, and I tell our kids all the time, part of a problem are these guys, blessed things. Okay. And, 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 and I, got, I got guys busting my stones. Okay, because I, I got I got vaccinated. You know, oh, you're a sheep. Oh, you're you're, oh, you're, you're fall. Listen, dude. Here's the deal. Okay, here's the deal. Okay, I don't know whether I'm a sheep or not a sheep. I know I made the decision myself. You know, I don't. I I know that this is this is what's going on. If this is what it takes to beat this thing, sure. Then we're doing it. I, that's why I did it. Okay. I didn't want to be the guy giving some kid. No, exactly. I I had it and I beat it. They said, well, you have the antibodies. Well, 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 wait a minute. No, who, who, you, who's saying that? What, uh, you know, that's, who's saying that? The guy at the corner? Because I don't know. I, you know what? I don't know if I have the antibodies. Or maybe I do. But you know what? I didn't want to be the guy that somehow, some way, got my, uh, be asymptomatic again and then give one of my players exactly. it. I didn't want to be the guy. So I got vaccinated. And um, if, it, if it works, it works. Hey, you know what? What if people would have said, honestly, I'm just, hey, when polio or smallpox, oh, I'm not going to get vaccinated I because I believe the government is um, Listen, is I go indoctrinating around, I go us. around this with my family members. I got family members. Who, I'm not doing that. I, I, and listen, do you, did you did you have polio? Well, no. Well, there's a reason you don't have polio. Right. It's a vaccine, okay? And I'll probably get. I know I'm going to probably get. You know, I, I got the anti-vax. See, that's the biggest thing is we're so divided, we can't. Debate it now, yeah, it, right? It, 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 like I tell, we're our so kids, polarized. I, I tell our kids all. I, I told this the other day. I said, if you're a conservative, which I am, you know you've won the debate when they call you a Nazi. Okay, the minute they say, yeah. "Well, you're just a Nazi," you yeah. know, okay, okay, I win right. now. I know you got nothing else. If if you we're we're not able to talk to each other anymore, and that's the part that's frustrating. Okay, and we're totally off of football now. And I, I, we'll get back. Don't okay, worry. Okay. Finish your thought. Okay. Um, if, if, if you can't talk to each other, if you can't respect that the uh, we, we agree to disagree. Right. You'll never told, solve problems I if you told can't that speak to the, to the other I told side. That, that's, that's my line to the official. Okay. That's, my, that's, my, that's my ending line to the official. That's not your ending line <laughs> to officials, <laughs> yes, coach. It is. it is now. All okay. right. Well, okay. the They're better doing. angels of your nature better have taken over. They have taken over. Because I know the, general state. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, and and we, I took a page out of his book. Yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Yeah, I'm we, playing. We, you, no, you're right. And when I was a younger man, that was, you know, I'm, but now I'm to the point where I've, I've come to realize that no matter what I say, they're not going to pick up the flag and go out. You know what? You're, you're right, right, Bob. No, you're no, right. you're right. You're right, Coach. You're right. I'm going right. to wave that off. You're right. You're a great point. I'm going to wave that. No. So at, at the, at the ending line is we agree to disagree. Sure. We agree to disagree. Okay. And, but again, that doesn't mean that I hate them. Okay, they make me mad sometimes when we disagree, mm -hmm. and 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 that you you just it. I don't know. I, I, it, it, it's it's difficult because it, on top of everything else, that now we have to try and instill in our young men and the people who are program. That's one of the things that you have to instill in them that there's all there, there's this there's this two worlds that we live in. Mm -hmm. It's like being in the military, okay? You're given an order, you follow the order, mm -hmm. okay? Okay, you don't agree with it, you get out of the military. You're given an order, you follow the order. That's our football program. I'm the head coach. I'm telling you to do something. That's the way to do it. You want to talk to me afterwards? After practice, you want to go over why we do it? I'll be more than happy to we'll, we'll sit down and talk why we're doing this. This is why we're doing it, and I'll explain it to you. And you can agree to disagree at, the, at that point. But right now, we're on the field. This is it. This is my world. Do an order, fall an order. On the other hand, okay, you have to have, now you have to have ability more than ever, you will have kids come and say, why? Yep. Why? That's the biggest thing I've seen in coaching change, and a lot of it has to do with just what we're talking about, the climate we live in, all the information, all the stuff that's going on, the, prese the presentation of two sides, okay? Okay. My coach told me to do something. <laughs> it wasn't. Hey, Bob, you got to drink battery acid and run into the wall five times a day. Okay. It's non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. Okay. And we still have that. That's part of the beauty of our sport. There are non-negotiable parts of our program. But they're shrinking they're, at a rapid pace. They're shrinking at a rapid pace. But there are certain core values. Yep. Sure. Okay. Sure. That we're going to have. On the other hand, what you do have to have as a coach and what's changed over the last 
40 years that I've been at this, okay, you have to understand that more kids want to know why. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest word is empathy. Mm -hmm. If you're empathetic a little bit, I mean, yeah. you just got to be empathetic to, you know, people are different and, and they come from different backgrounds and everybody has a different story and, you know, my mother and father expect me to do exactly what you said. Whatever the coach says, you do it. Doesn't matter. But at the same time, the next guy is not like that. And his mother and father might not be like that. And they might say, well, ask him why. And I, I guess as a coach, the non-negotiables, I don't know. They're shrinking. But at the same time, if you look at it through an empathetic lens and say, hey, look, it's it's society now. Yep. So I got to be a little more empathetic. At the same time, I could stick to my core values and principles. Absolutely. Hey, my kids are standing for the flag. Absolutely. We, 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 have, we have the uh, color guard out there, and I was really proud of my kids the first three weeks. The, 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 all their helmets was in their left hand. The right hand was on their heart. And we actually, I brought guys from the VFW to explain why that's important. Because you know what? If you're not taught it, if it's not allowed, it's taught. You know what I mean? So, so you know, you, so either you, you, you're coaching kids to do it or you're allowing them to do it. Yep. So, so if you tell kids, hey, look, the flag is a uniting. It's the one thing we can unite over. It's not a dividing factor. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing. And I brought a black guy and a white guy that were veterans in Vietnam. One of the, the, the African-American man was, uh, was uh, uh, head of the VFW, the commander in the state of Ohio. Mm -hmm. And he came down and talked to the kids. Um, and it was important to have a white and black guy together, especially when you're, when you're talking about this, because it is controversial, mm -hmm. you know? And if a kid sees it today, they, they're saying, well, that's okay to take a knee. Well, no, it's not. And teach them why, because it's the one thing that unites us, doesn't divide us. That should be the one thing where you say, hey, people better than me sacrifice their lives so I can live free. And, and have they didn't these, know you. And, and, and to have these choices, yep. to have these choices. So yep. when, when, you know, and once you explain it to kids and you teach them that, now, n now you know what? You're not going to have some of these controversial things because, uh, you know, when they see some of their heroes doing things, they don't understand. They, don't, they just see it happening and they say, well, if they're doing it, I'm going to do it because, uh, you know, they're making a stand. Which well, is a make? slippery slope. It, it is. And you know what? Once you teach the kids that veterans are important, that that's the one thing that unites us, you know, we could take a minute and a half before every game to, to, to honor veterans that passed away or, or didn't even pass, just fought for our freedoms. Now you're taking on, hey, now you're teaching the kids. Yep. And you're not going to see that stuff. And um, I do think that's disrespectful. Now, that's me. That's, my, that's me because I feel that that's not the time and place. Yep. To, 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 to air your social issue. There's other times and places for there's it. a whole lot of other venues. Yeah, there's, there's, there's 23 other hours in a day. And I think most coaches... Me and Bob have the same ideology on this, so it, it's you're talking to two guys that b b believe. Yeah, it's it. probably an echo chamber. Yeah. Yeah, yes, but but there, I think most of the guys I know and most of the guys he knows feels the same way that we're we're saying this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, have the same sentiments. It's just a slippery slope talking about it. And sure if you is. don't talk about it with cooth and empathy for the other side, then now you're being a one-sided pig you're yeah. being you're being uh you, you know you've fl you've gone to the other side like i said the, the, the whole thing is okay you get you know when you get there's that political spectrum that i teach okay that and, and uh, the, the the best history guy i know was a guy i taught with an alliance retired now i'm frank mancini lives here in canfield we're still very very good friends best history guy i know okay and Oh, I used to do a left-right political spectrum. That's what sure. I do in sociology. And, this is what it is. and he taught me just recently, it's not a, it's not a straight line. It, it's almost like a horseshoe. It comes together. Because once you get so far off the, to the right or to the left, you start getting down this to where the only thing that you agree on is that you hate the other side really, yeah. really bad. Okay? Isn't that the truth? And, 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 and that's what scares me the most. That's what, that's what I battle. That's what we – that's – that's the new battle in coaching, mm -hmm. okay, for me that I've encountered in the last 10 to 15 years, okay, is you have to, and we live in a very conservative community. Mm -hmm. I do anyway. I mean, mm -hmm. Andy's teaching in, in Youngstown City. It's, it's worlds apart, okay. It's, it's worlds apart from, from Columbiana. Columbiana is almost this, Columbiana, and Columbiana County in general, you'll see 
it wasn't even, no one even thought about it. Mm-hmm. No one even would bring up the idea of, hey, coach, what would I do? What would you do if I kneel for the flag? And I, I said, don't even try it. You'll win, you'll win the Supreme Court case in May. Yeah, exactly. But you're all, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You'll win the court, uh, you'll, you'll, court you'll, case you'll, in May, but you ain't playing the rest of the year because yeah. that's, how, the, that's yeah. how everybody probably felt. Yeah. You know, I was questioning a lot when I had 60 guys playing in reserve and we all came out with American flags for every game. We all came out with American flags. And the kids wanted to do it. And I, I'm, I'm with the country. You know what I mean? That, that's not political, being with the country. And they all came out with flags. And some people in town said, hey, why are you brainwashing these kids to be, uh, you know, right wingers? And I thought to myself, well, I'm not a right winger, number one. And, and, you know, I'm with the country. I'm with veterans. I'm with the thought of we have a great country. And uh, this is a great country because we have progressed. We have progressed uh, uh, society through and changed mm-hmm. because we are open. Mm-hmm. And when, with openness comes change for the better over time. Uh, when you're authoritarian government and you're closed, that's when you have a problem. So I, I'm proud of our country. Now, I'm not proud of everything that's happened in the past. Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't think anybody you know today that has the right kind of mindset would say slavery is a good thing. Absolutely mm-hmm. not. That's terrible. It's rotten. And it's, 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 a, it's a scar on our history. But at the same time, you know, you progress, and, you know, much of the 60s was that turmoil to make things better. And, and, and you know what, uh, you know, I, I think, again, w- how can you be united? How can, what are what some unites of the, you? What unites you? And I feel always this, veterans unite you. Guys that defended, that spent time of their youth to go defend our, our country. And, and that should be the uniting factor. And what represents them more than anything? the flag yep. so so you know what i always felt like that and i know it's like beating a drum beating a dead horse but at the same time if you could find some commonalities and some common ground with everybody and then teach those common that teach that commonalities and common ground we'll be better we all will all be better yep. and and that that segues in, you're, you're exactly right the thing that is a challenge now for us as coaches and as teachers okay you used to have a lot of things that united you. There yeah. were a lot of things. Sure. I, 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 that, that same that, that same book I talk about, them Ben Sass's book. Okay, and I never thought about it, but he's absolutely right. Did you know that eighty nine percent of the country watched the last episode of Mash? Okay, eighty nine percent. There were only three networks. You got your news. You got the you you you, you were you know, no matter whether you were left or whether you were for the Vietnam War or against the Vietnam War, whether you were whether you were a, a peacenik or, or, or a hard hat, you watched Mash, you watched I Love Lucy, you watched Gunsmoke, sure. you, watched, you you had you had something you could talk about at the water cooler and not be political, you had something you could talk about in the teachers' lounge, or you had something that you could deal with. The most watched show now is Hannity. On Fox News, on cable news, it's less than one percent, or it's just over one percent of the nation watches that. But that's the most watched one. But isn't th- isn't that telling? It that, is. that our, our country is divided, but so is our attention. Our attention span is divided. Our our, our our country's divided, and and the and 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 just like you said, you know, we need to find things that that we ag- agree on. It used to be, and I think that's one of the things that when that, when it first came down, when when Colin Kaepernick did that, that's one of the things that I think the people that came out and said about the flag, you know, listen. Respect your right to do it, okay? You just need to find another venue. Because I didn't come to this football game to see a political statement. Right. Okay? They come to I, see sports. I, I, I sports was the one thing we had, yep. okay, for a long time that you did unite us, okay? That did unite us. You could look at it and you could, uh, you, the old goofy old movie Major League, mm-hmm. you know, you watch them in the bar, the Cleveland Indians are winning the thing, and the two guys, right. they're, 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 they're two total. Uh, hugging at the hugging, end. Hugging at the end. And they probably hated each other. And they take a look at each other, they, and they say, "The heck with them." They keep hugging each yeah, other. Exactly. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, you know, and, and I think I think that's where I think that's where getting back to what we do, athletics. I think that's why it's so important. I think that's why it, it, it's something that can unite us. It's something we can rally around. It's something that we can be proud of. And going yeah. on that right there, if you know what, where else do sometimes you see? And I don't know where else, but like you know, you know, where else do you see African American kids and white kids playing together and cooperating as much as other than sports? 
And it, because our society is divided, but when you when you get to know somebody on a team, yep. you figure out a lot of hey, we have a lot more commonalities. Hey, Everybody wants to be treated right. Hey. Everybody wants to you know hey. have an opportunity. Hey. Everybody and then you, the sweat smells the same. You, you know this what? Blood you looks put the your same. pants on the same. Hey. You bleed the same, and yeah. then you know yeah. what? You work Wait the a same. I, I, you know, I, I, I'm tired, and you're tired, and. And I hate the coach right now, and you know what? You hate the coach right now too. Right, okay. right, 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 so, right. So right. we got right. stairs because we slept in. Yeah, yeah. right. Exactly. You know, right. And, <laughs> exactly. and, and and then you find that common ground through sports more than anything. Yeah. Growing up, more than anything. Well, and, and and we look at it from our standpoint at YSN is is when COVID did hit, the first thing to come back was sports mm-hmm. because sports does unify. Sports lets us know it's okay. Um, and we get through it together because of the common bonds that we share during baseball, football, basketball, volleyball, you name it. It's, it's what we all rally around. Even it, This country would not survive if there was no sports. I can oh, tell I you don't, that. Yeah, like I said, we're, absolutely. Because no matter if, – if you're a Buckeye fan, you're a Buckeye fan. If you're a Notre Dame fan, you're there. If you're Tennessee, Alabama, you watch all that stuff. If you're a Cleveland Browns fan, okay? Pittsburgh Steelers, whatever it may be, it gives you – it, it goes back to the, there are so few things in this country right now where we can unite and rally behind it, okay, and find something that we enjoy together regardless of our political beliefs, regardless of everything else. For two hours on a Friday night or three hours on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday afternoon, you know what? We're in this together. Sure. Okay, our guys, our guys got to win, okay? Our, our jersey's got to win here. So. I love it. All right, let's spin it back one more time. One last question <laughs> for you guys. Uh, you guys have a lot of mutual respect for each other, and you go Absolutely. back a long, long way. So my question to you is, what do you appreciate the most from Andy when you're looking across the sidelines? And I'll ask you the same question about Bob. Well, I, let me go. I'll go first here. I, I told, you know, Andy said, Andy kiddingly said, hey, you know, don't, don't vote us out of the league. Don't I said, Andy, you got to understand something, okay? My nightmare, our nightmare is – you're back in coaching at Youngstown Christian, okay, a team that has a talent base. And what I respect most about Andy, because I have a lot of people, how can you like that guy? He's so loud. He's so abrasive. That's what I love about it, okay? You, you, you are never going to get a fake Andy Hake. Right. There's not one fake moment, okay? And the other thing I love about him more than anything else is he stands for what he stands for. He's unapologetic. You know when you play an Andy Hake team, you <laughs> You better be ready. If you aren't ready, they're going to run you off the field. And he's done that to me a couple times. Okay, You're going to run me off the field because your kids are going to play so hard. All you got to do is put the videotape on, turn, turn the huddle on, flick through this. Don't watch a play. Don't watch anything else. Just watch their kids play. Okay, They play with their hair on fire. They, they play with a passion. For better or worse, and I mean this as a compliment, he gets them to drink the Kool-Aid. They are convinced that if they don't defend well, what was Western Reserve, what, what is Valley Christian now, if they don't defend Valley Christian, okay, that somehow the end of the world is going to take place. Okay? <laughs> that somehow Columbiana is going to come in and pillage the town of, of you know, they are, they, are the, they are the Romans at the gate. Yeah. Okay? They are the centurions. You're not getting past us. And, and that's, you know, um, and, and he's just a hoot to be around. He is. Okay. Coach? Well, I, I respect Bob as much as anybody in this area and when it comes to coaching. And I mean that. And I truly mean that. It's not, that's not it's no BS. And I know, you know, year after year, you know, you watch certain individuals work with young people, and it's an admirable. And as, and as a young person, when I, I graduated in 1998, Coaches were larger than life. It was right, right. When the internet started hitting, but you know, c- coaches were larger than life. It, you know, right, now you could click on and, and see all kind of things, and a lot of it's noise and distractions. But like right when I graduated, there were certain guys that I thought were larger than life. You know what I mean? Um, at Harding at that time, that McDaniel's came around, and 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 I I saw him at Kent McKinley. And I thought there, you know, the Reno and Steubenville. These yep. guys are larger than life, and I thought. Bob Spate's one of those guys. He's just a civilian general. You know, you know, you have war generals and then you have civilian generals. And the civilian generals have the same kind of impact on society that a war general would have during wartime. And um, affecting young people in a positive way, you're never going to find someone 
that was as good as Bob. And and you're not gonna and and and, and, and that that's not shallow words because he's involved in the coaches association. Uh, he's a, he's the vice president of the coaches. Uh, <laughs> But no, no, but but it's it's fact. It's you know there's fact and fiction. And I looked at you know I'm a, I'm a history guy, you know. And uh, there's a few civilian generals that I, that I believe are are, are are societal generals, and 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 Bob Spate's one of them, you know. And 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 again, he has impact on 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 the community, the community of Columbiana. He was able to change that, their image, and make uh, give them an identity, you know, through football. And they have tough kids, and they have of um they are going to play with all their heart. And they played for him. If I, you know, I have a son that's one, one and a half years old. It would be an honor, you know. Hopefully he's around that many more years. God bless him. Hey, but you know what? I, I, let's see, I'd be in my 90s. I'm hey, not so sure. prop him up like the old man of Europe and carry him around because I'd coach for him. Hey, I'd coach for him, and I mean that when I say that. I'd want my son to be coached by Bob Spate. And I think, you know, when, when, when you start saying, what's the highest honor you could talk about somebody? You know, I love, you know what, I love to coach my son. If that's what he wants to do, you know, if that's what he wants to do, play ball. But, but you know what, I'd really love my son to be coached by Bob Spate because I know this, he's going to be coached about football and, and the game. Uh, uh, but more importantly, he's going to be talked about, about principles and ethics and things that matter. And um, I think that's like the highest honor. You know, that's the highest honor. That's awesome. Thank right. you. That is fantastic. I mean, we are well over an hour with these two, and we could go all day. We could I can listen to him running. all day. It's like pearls, man. I he gives you pearls, it. man. I love it. I, I think this is great, and obviously uh, Johnny's going to love it because it's an hour uh, of his logo being up right here in the bottom right-hand corner. We're here at Koo Flightners uh, in Boardman. Again, the this Taj Mahal. Um, the, the, this is unbelievable, by the way. This it really is. is. I, I first came up here and saw Andy, okay, and I walked in this place, and I'm going, Holy root! It's slack jawing. <laughs> it's slack jawing when you first it, see it. It is. It, it, it's 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 unbelievable. It's slack jawing when you first <laughs> hear it. Football's flying in. Yeah, and uh, I, I'll tell you what. It, it was a real honor to be here today with you, Coach. It well, really was. That. You know, DJ. Well, it's it always great fun. to see you, man. Done, and man. and uh, yep. you're a great dude, and you do a heck of a job for the valley. Really appreciate it. This is really, really something. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the Youngstown Sports Network. That is really that is that that's that that has really filled a void for people that love uh, football in this area and love high school football and just sports in general. Yes, you know sir. what I mean? This has really filled a void, and um, it was an honor to be here with you today, Coach. Yeah, it really fun. was. You I, know? I appreciate that, and thanks for inviting me. And like I said, what you've done, when I first came here in 94 and slightly before that, you know, remember Dana Bollish mm -hmm. sure. and, the, 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 and uh, Pat uh, Saunders? Mm -hmm. They did a little thing, little thing called Inside High School Football. You've kind of picked up that mantle and, and, and done that because that – that was a big deal, and what you do now is a big deal for a lot of our kids. We appreciate you guys. I mean, listen, from our side, you guys have never said no to us. I, I remember waiting for you for uh, for <laughs> 15 minutes after practice, and I said, Coach, I know last minute, can I get in? Absolutely. Come take a seat. I, I mean, the coaches, the, the, the parents, everybody. So thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you next week with another Coach's Corner with Andy Hake.